How can you discover and walk in the perfect will of God for your life? Let's look to the scripture to find out. Before I begin, make sure you're subscribed to Encounter TV on YouTube and click that notification bell when you do subscribe so that you can receive alerts when we put out new content. You can also follow us wherever you're watching us. What is God's perfect specific plan for your life? What's the perfect will of God? How do you discover the will of God? And then how do you walk in the will of God? Now, Every sincere believer wants to know, what is my divine destiny? What ministry has God called me to? What am I supposed to do with my life for His glory? Well, the good news is that the scripture gives us some foundational truth from which we can work. For starters, every believer is called to live holy. 1 Peter 1.16 says, For the scriptures say you must be holy because I am holy. Every believer is called to evangelize. Mark 16, 15 says, And then he told them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Every believer is called to worship. John 4, 24 says, For God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Every believer is called to pray. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, Never stop praying. Every believer is called to know God's word. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. We're all called to demonstrate love. Luke 10.27 says, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Every believer is called to serve in the local church. 1 Peter 4.10 says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. So when it comes to the Christian life, the Bible gives us very clear instructions on how we should live. Now, Setting those in place as foundational truths, the believer then begins to wonder, okay, I know what the Bible says I should do as a Christian, but what should I do as an individual? So the scripture gives us very clear insight into the life that we should be living. Live holy, worship, know the word, pray, and so forth. But what should you do specifically? And this is where believers become confused or frustrated because they want to know specifically for my life with who God created me to be, what is my divine destiny? Well, the scripture, of course, has the answer. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. I'm going to read a parable here that's quite popular. Matthew 25, let's begin at verse 14. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last. Dividing it in proportion to their abilities, he then left on his trip. So here, the master is giving to his servants resources. And he gives them resources in proportion to their ability. So they all began with a different starting point. Continuing to read, verse 16 says, The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. So this first servant does well. He uses what the master had given to him. He invested that and multiplied the resources. Verse 21, the master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Now, 
when the master says, I'll give you many more responsibilities, this parable is speaking of eternity. You and I will be given responsibilities in the heavenly realm, dependent upon how we used what God gave to us in the earthly realm. Verse 22, the servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest and I have earned two more. And then the same thing happens. The master celebrates the multiplication of the resources. Verse 24, this is where it gets interesting. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money. So I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. Now, what does the master do in response to this? Does he say, oh, I understand. Oh, your heart was in the right place. I get why you did what you did. No. In fact, he responds with just anger. Verse 26, but the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the 10 bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now, the servant who was rebuked did nothing with what the master had given to him. Now, obviously, the master in this parable is representative of the Father in heaven. Notice that when the master went away on his long journey, he gave to each servant resources in proportion to their abilities, and then he left no instructions. You see, there's this misconception in the Christian world. We imagine that we're going to stand before God one day, and he's going to say, you were supposed to be a lawyer, but you became a doctor instead. Now I'll judge you harshly for that. Or you became a pastor when I called you to be a businessman. Now I'm going to judge you harshly for that. But when it comes to the will of God, the Lord makes room for our free will. In fact, He's given us free will so that we can exercise that free will. Now, as we established earlier, there are certain things that every Christian ought to be doing. Living holy, worshiping, knowing and teaching the word, evangelizing the lost, and so forth. But when it comes to the specific will of God for your life, it's actually quite simple. And we see that in the parable. God gives you resources often without specific instructions. Now, this isn't to say that there aren't moments or seasons where God will ordain very specific things for your life. But more often than not, it's as you're going that the Spirit is guiding. Many believers make the mistake of just standing still, waiting for the perfect will of God to be revealed by a voice from heaven that specifically tells them what they ought to do with every day of their life. And if they don't receive that, they freeze in fear. And they say, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to move unless the Lord speaks to me. Here's what the Bible says. Acts chapter 16, verses 6 to 8 says this. Next, Paul and Silas traveled through the area of Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. Then, coming to the borders of Mysia, they headed north for the province of Bithynia. But again, the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So instead, they went on through Mysia, to the seaport of Troas. So here we see that Paul and Silas did not pray about going into Asia. You know how I know they didn't pray about going into Asia? Because as they went, the Holy Spirit stopped them at least for that season. This means what the apostles did is if they didn't have specific instruction from the Lord, they would go where there was a need and the Holy Spirit would guide them as they went. They didn't stand around waiting for specific instructions on every single thing. They continued along that path, listening for the voice of the Holy Spirit, allowing the correction to come as they moved. God will perfect the path as you walk along the path. God will reveal step two and three, but you have to first take step one. 
Now, let's balance this thought because I'm not saying that we ought to live presumptuous lives, just going where we want, doing what we want, never seeking the guidance of God. But what I am saying is that knowing the specific will of God for your life is a process. And in fact, it's found by simply using the resources and talents that God has given to you to fulfill His command. So what is the specific will of God for your life? Well, what talents has He given to you? Think about the fact that God has given to you a spiritual gift. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 makes it clear that every believer has been given a spiritual gift. You have been given time. You have been given relationships. You have been given resources. You've been given a personality. You've been given passions and giftings and talents. The question is, how are you using what God has given to you to bring about the kingdom of God in the earth? So your purpose is linked with your passion. The path before you is linked with the resources that God has given to you. What is the specific will of God for your life? The specific will of God for your life is for you to use your specific gifts and talents to fulfill God's broader plan. God has called you to use specifically what He has given to you to fulfill His will, to advance His kingdom. So, how can you use what God has given to you to fulfill these broader, more clear commands? Don't wait around just for that specific instruction. Get to work. Do something with what God has given to you. Notice in the parable that God did not rebuke the servants who went and did something. He didn't say, that's not exactly what I wanted. No, he praised them for doing something. It was the servant who was lazy that was called wicked. It was the servant who froze in fear and did nothing that received the rebuke from the Lord. He rebuked him for doing nothing. He said, you could have at least deposited my money and earned me some interest. That's the least you could have done. In other words, you should have done something. So stop freezing in fear. Stop being gripped by paranoid religious thinking that tells you that you have to get everything exactly right or God will be angry with you. No, as long as you're living out those basics, you're walking in holiness, you're evangelizing the lost, you're living a lifestyle of worship, you know the word, you have a prayer life, then all of the specifics that come with that will be revealed in time, but you must be going to be guided. So let's balance this one more time. No, you shouldn't live a life of presumption. Have a prayer life so that you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit correcting your movement. On the other hand, don't wait around doing nothing. Do something with what God has given to you. Your specific call is to use your specific gifts. What has He given to you? Use your specific gifts to fulfill the broader purposes of world evangelism and kingdom expansion. What can you do right now? How can you impact the world around you using what God has given to you? Father, I pray that you would begin to reveal to your people how you've gifted them, what talents you've placed in their hands, the resources you've provided. And I pray, Lord, that your servants would be neither presumptuous nor paranoid. But Lord, that they would walk in wisdom, that they would live according to your word, that they might walk in your will. Continue to reveal yourself to them. Make the path clear. Give them the faith to take that first step. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Holy Spirit, let your power flow. Let that healing anointing flow. Save, heal, deliver your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. Well, that's it for the message. Here now is a question for conversation. What gifts, talents, and resources can you begin to use right now to advance God's kingdom. Tell me in the comment section right now, and here are some comments from a previous video titled, Bible Scriptures on the Holy Spirit to Start or Finish Your Day.
Evangelina Cantu writes, Thank you so much for this video. It blessed me so much. I used it during my time with the Lord and I prayed these scriptures into my life and family. I'm so grateful. Martha Rusta writes, This was so powerful. I felt the presence of God as I was listening to this sermon and the music was so peaceful. I'm in tears. Thank you, Jesus, for this ministry. Char Chava writes, David, this is so beautiful. I need more of this. Please, the music and the words are perfect for meditating with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And Emily Laramore wrote, This is absolutely amazing, so beautifully done. This is a great way to start and end my day. Thank you so much for uploading this. One more time, I want to remind you, make sure you're subscribed to Encounter TV on YouTube and click that notification bell when you do subscribe so that you can receive notices when we put out new content. You can also follow us wherever you're watching us. I want to ask you to join a spiritual rescue mission. Do you realize that every single day, over 150,000 people pass into eternity? Many of them pass into eternity without Christ. So, I'm asking for your help. We need to tell the world that Jesus saves. I know you love the Lord. I know you love souls. I know that you love and appreciate this ministry. So I'm asking you to stand with us, partner with us, and help fund the creation of content like this, help fund the live streams, help fund the evangelistic events that we do all around the world, help fund this ministry. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner to become a monthly supporter of this ministry. Your support helps this ministry to continue going and growing strong. We want to continue to tell the world that Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus delivers. Will you help us tell the world? This is about not just impacting lives, but eternities. Think about that. Through your selfless giving, eternities will be changed. We are snatching souls from hellfire. Truly, this is a rescue mission. So help us do it. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Sign up to become a monthly supporter today. I know the Lord will bless you for it, but that's not why we give. We give because we love Him. We give because we love souls. So stand with us and help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all around the world through the power of the Holy Spirit. And until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.